in Egyptian brokered ceasefire between Israel and Gaza militants held on Wednesday. Gaza resident, residents are trying to resume the normal pace of life after weeks of destructive airstrikes. Thousands who fled are returning to find their homes turned into rubble. In the meantime, sirens that warn of incoming missiles are silent in Israel. And now the critical analysis of winners and losers of the conflict begins. Earlier, I spoke with Matt Duss, who is president of the Foundation for Middle East Peace in Washington, D.C. Matt, welcome to Arise America. Thanks so much for being here. Let me just start with this. How optimistic are you, or pessimistic, you choose about this truce and that it will hold for any reasonable amount of time? Well, I'm optimistic that it will hold for, for longer, certainly, than previous ones have. Um, because of a number of reasons. One is just that Hamas leaders um, that have been in hiding for the duration of, of this, this war are, have now come out and are now out in public. I'm talking about Ismail Haniya, the Palestinian prime minister of Gaza, Mahmoud Zahar, another very high-level leader of Hamas. Um, in, in, during previous ceasefires, which broke down, you didn't see these leaders showing themselves. The fact that they are doing so now indicates to me um, that they are confident that it will hold. And is this truce different, uh, those things notwithstanding that you just mentioned, uh, is this truce different than previous ones that ultimately, even if it was over an extended period of time, ultimately didn't hold? Well, I think it's different in that it, it takes into account that there needs to be a much more expansive, at least on paper, it recognizes that there needs to be a much more expansive change to the status quo. Now, of course, this is all, this all depends on the actual implementation. Um, in the immediate term, it, rec it allows uh, for, of course, you know, an end to the rocket fire, an end to the Israeli bombing, but it also allows for the entrance of humanitarian goods and other supplies into Gaza. But then there, uh, over a period of weeks, there are going to be more intensive discussions relating to a broader ease of the closure of the blockade uh, on Gaza. And I think that is where we're going to really see whether this is different. The in easing of the blockade was a condition of the 2012 ceasefire. It was not implemented. Um, so I think making sure that it is implemented in, in this time um, will be a key factor in making sure we don't simply come back here in two years. And speaking of that, for that very reason, because these blockades are being released, it seems very clear that Hamas sees this as a victory. There was celebrating in the, in the streets. Mm -hmm. However, uh, Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, has come under sharp criticism about this. Do you think he'll pay a political price for this truce? Well, I think we're seeing already, according to the polls, that he is being paying a bit of a political price. But that's because he himself and those around him set fairly high expectations uh, for the for the operation in Gaza. Several weeks ago, you had members of his government and other supporters out making statements about how Israel must be allowed to crush Hamas. You had the former Israeli ambassador to the United States, Michael Oren, even make, writing an op-ed in the Washington Post, arguing that Israel needed to be allowed the freedom to crush Hamas, even at that time. Many Many were wondering, what does that actually look like? Is Israel capable of doing this? Uh, historically, Israel, or at least over the past several years, Israel has shown itself to have an interest in keeping Hamas weakened, but in power in Gaza, because there are groups even worse than Hamas, more extreme than Hamas, waiting to fill the void if Hamas's ability to, con to control the region, to control the Gaza, is diminished too greatly. Uh, but having set those expectations uh, very high and now completely failing to meet them, I think I think that is something that's reflected in the plummeting poll numbers uh, for Netanyahu. But for, for Hamas, I think they really have no choice but to celebrate uh, this ceasefire um, as a kind of guerrilla insurgent movement. I mean, it's the nature of asymmetric warfare that you, you, you declare victory simply by not losing. Um, but it's hard to say that they achieved anything uh, with this ceasefire more than they would have gotten several weeks ago, uh, the, the, the earlier ceasefire that was offered by Egypt. There is, Matt, a second phase, if you will, to this truce. Talk a little bit about that and a little bit about the tough contingency that Israel has put on that second phase uh, in terms of truly demilitarizing Hamas. Right. I mean, the demilitarization of Hamas, the disarming or the, the incorporating of Hamas 
uh, into the Palestinian Authority uh, security services is something that has been talked about. And I think it's a just goal. I would note here that this cannot be, in my view, a condition of the, the economic redevelopment and the humanitarian assistance going uh, to Gaza. I, I, I don't think that Gaza's civilian population should be held hostage to that condition, but I do recognize it as, as a legitimate goal. Um, as for the longer term uh, conditions and you know, expectations and talks that will, will take place, one of the goals here is to open up the Rafah crossing, that's the crossing at the southern end of Gaza between Gaza and Egypt, but have that crossing uh, patrolled and manned and the security um, handled by the Palestinian Palestinian Authority under the leadership of Mahmoud Abbas. This is something uh, that, that Prime Minister Netanyahu has indicated he would support. It's mentioned in, in the ceasefire agreement. Uh, EU partners such as the UK, Germany and France have indicated that they would support an assistance mission or reactivating an assistance mission that was started in 2005 after the Israelis withdrew to help train, equip and monitor um, the Palestinian Authority at that crossing as a way of creating confidence for Israel and Egypt. Um, so there are seeds of a real change to the status quo here. Um, I, I think it's essential uh, that, 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 that the economic redevelopment of Gaza be allowed, that there be greater imports and exports to facilitate that redevelopment. Um, but again, I think this is, this is going to be a fairly difficult negotiation over the next several weeks to see that these conditions are implemented. Yeah, suffice it to say, there will be a lot of parties that are waiting to exhale, if you will. We'll have to leave the discussion right there for now. Matt Dust. Thank you so much.